Okay, this is going to be a disassembly of a West Point Model 33. It's the same thing as a model, a Marlin 336 or a Glenfield Model 30, all made by Marlin, all the same thing, just for different companies. This is my neighbor's gun. He wanted me to clean it, so I figured I'd do a video on it. Uh, this is a voiceover. The original video I had to read on the background, and I got a warning from YouTube about copyright infringement, so that's why it's a voiceover. It has been safety checked, no ammo on the table, like always. I know I don't say that a lot in my videos, but that's the way it always is. First thing we'll do is take the finger lever off, so you're going to go from the right side of the receiver. And this first part will be field stripping. So you don't want it cocked away at 90 degrees. It's cocked about right there. And just that one screw right there, the finger lever screw, we're going to take that off and our finger lever should slide right down. And that was really loose. I could probably take that off by hand. So now our finger lever should just slide straight down. Let's pull it straight out. Okay, we're just going to take our breech bolt out. Just push your hammer all the way down and slide it right out. I'll do the breech bolt disassembly and reassembly on different videos, so this one's not too long. So it'll be three videos. There's this disassembly, a reassembly, and then we'll do uh, a disassembly and reassembly of the bolt, breech bolt. And that's basically your field strip right there. That's why Marlin was so popular, I think, because you can clean it from the breech in. You just take the cleaner out through the rear there and go straight up through your barrel and get it all cleaned out. With a Winchester, you couldn't do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this stock off so I don't mess up his furniture at all. It's just held on by one screw. I'm just going to take that off and it should pull straight back. Another loose screw. This is my first time using a, my phone because I didn't have a cameraman too, so let me know what you think about video quality. Leave a comment or something. Just pull straight back. Should pull right off. Got the stock, set that aside. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take out, remove our ejector, ejector spring. Come to find out, this was broke. You can kind of see it there, it's broke. If I was smart, I could just flip the gun over and it'd drop right out, but instead I have to make it difficult. I probably did it so I wouldn't lose the camera uh, view, make sure it's still centered. You can see there it popped right out. Again, I should just flip it over, but I gotta make it difficult. Go ahead and get some needle nose pliers on there instead of just flipping it. There we go. There should be a little hook on the end of that. You can actually see it in the, you can see it right here. Right in there you can see that. So that'll have to be replaced. So it's a good thing we took it apart. Next we'll take our hammer spring adjustment plate and our hammer spring right here. So we're going to release our hammer. So you're going to push that button in behind your trigger. Hold the hammer so it doesn't slam forward and just pull your trigger. That way you release that tension off that hammer spring. Just don't let it slam down. You should just be able to slide this right out from right to left. You might have to put a little tension forward to do it, but we'll go ahead and try to slide it out. Just slide right out of there. There's your hammer strut, hammer spring, hammer spring adjustment plate. 
We'll go all through the details of how to put it back in through the, on a reassembly video. Next, we'll take out our hammer. So that's our hammer screw. It's only going to be threaded into the left side of the receiver. So it, the whole screw is not threaded. It goes all the way through, but it's just threaded into the left side of the receiver. So you don't have to keep turning and turning and turning. Just to let you know, FYI. So that's the only part that's threaded. Your hammer should come straight out, but of course I, the scope's on there, so I can't get it. I'll figure that out here in a minute after I mess with it a little bit. I figured it out. I just tried to I tried to avoid taking the scope off, but we're gonna have to take it off. All right, there we go. It should just lift straight up. All right, we'll take our trigger guard plate out now right there. It'll be two screws. Just them two. If you haven't taken your hammer out already, you're going to have to remove your uh, your hammer screw also. So actually, it's something about three screws, I guess, technically. That's where your hammer screw went. So if you don't have that removed, you'll, sort of, you'll have to take that off to get your floor plate off trigger guard plate. This screw here should be a little bit longer than the side one. Just an FYI for, and if, if you get them mixed up, we'll go, we'll get into detail about it on the re reassembly video. That one should be shorter there than this one right here. It's been a while since I've taken apart a Marlin, but wound up that's that being the case that this one's shorter well sometimes your trigger guard plate will be difficult to take out I don't think this has ever been apart and clean and I believe this was I can't remember what year this was made late 60s or early 70s and it's guard plate should just pop right off and it did it came off surprisingly easy Uh, we're not going to take the trigger apart or anything. I thought about it. I just cleaned it all out and everything. Next, take your locking bolt out. It just lifts straight out. Right there. Just lift it straight out. There's your locking block. Next, the carrier assembly right here. And it's only holding her by one screw. Right there. That's the same concept as a hammer screw. It's just threaded on the left side of the receiver, so you don't have to keep unscrewing and unscrewing and unscrewing. Just to let you know again. Now the carrier should just come right out the bottom. Just give it a little help. And that's your carrier assembly. Put my screw back in there so I can keep track of it all. Next we'll do our loading spring. One screw. And it's called the loading spring screw. Makes sense. that back in there keep track of it
You might have a, a barrel band if you're doing a marlin. I can't remember if it's a pin or a screw. But you'll probably also have to take your front side off to get that if you have a barrel band on it. But the most of your front sights are uh, threaded. So you just unscrew it and then it just pop it right off on your, for your front sight. Pretty easy. So this will be two screws, one on either side. And one on the other side. Go ahead and take off the swivel mount or the swivel mount, the sling mount. You really don't have to do this, I don't know why I did it. Now I think I'm fiddling with it here because I thought it was a two piece mount, like the two halves that go together. Next, we'll do our front barrel band, and you got to take the screw all the way out. Just the one screw. You got to take it all the way out. Come on. Take it out. There we go. Next, we'll take the magazine plug off. One screw is going to hold that in. Just keep your thumb over it because it is, is under uh, spring pressure. Knowing that it's under spring pressure, I still almost lost it. Nope, oh, almost went. There's your plug, magazine spring, and the follower. I believe the follower is going to come out towards the uh, receiver end. Magazine tube will slide right off. And the follower is still in the receiver there. We'll just take the, you might slide your furniture forward a little bit. It should just pop off. And here's the follower. Of course, out of camera view. We'll work on that next time. And that is it for the uh, disassembly. Uh, the, the reassembly is also going to be a voiceover because I have my radio in the background on that one too. So my apologies. Thanks for watching.